Mm. I wanted to teach on consecration. I don't know how this choir always pick up <laughs> whatever I want to teach about, but they are blessed. Amen. But then the Lord said something that we should continue to do warfare. Hallelujah. The warfare we were doing on Zoom, I'm bringing it, part of it to the altar this morning. Hallelujah. And uh, we have been using the book of Olukoya lately called Prayer Rain. If you have that book, it's very valuable. Use it whenever you need to war. Hallelujah. Now, the topic the Lord chose for this morning is using the blood of Jesus as a weapon. Can we clap for the blood of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 3 to 5. Hallelujah. Whenever God is ready to fight, be on his side. Amen. Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verse 6 says, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Hallelujah. Now, the first thing I want to say to us, brethren, is that if you want to be strong in warfare, be strong in obedience. Hallelujah. Be strong in obedience. Be strong in holiness. Amen. Because that's what that verse 6 is saying, that God is ready to revenge every disobedience towards you from the world of darkness when your own obedience is fulfilled. Amen. Now, I remember I was asking the Lord about uh, this COVID-19. I said, Father, we've been praying. What is the weapon that you want us to use? And he said, the blood of Jesus. I know we like fire. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something about the weapons of our warfare. Number one, there are many. Amen? Because the Bible says here, weapons. Amen? Hallelujah. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty. That is, they are not, they are not natural. Hallelujah. We may be walking around as uh, flesh and blood, but the weapons that God uses through us, they are not normal weapons. Hallelujah. They are not natural. Praise the Lord. But they are mighty through God and they pull down strongholds. That's the first thing. Amen. Ever say weapons. We have many weapons. Amen. We have the name of Jesus Christ. We have his blood. Hallelujah. We have the Bible. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We even have praises. <laughs> many of you don't know that as we were praising God this morning, we were doing warfare. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Worship. All, even your clapping is a weapon. As I, when you clap, you clap properly. It's a serious weapon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But whenever it comes to warfare, God chooses the weapon. Hallelujah. Because he knows the nature of the battle. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? He knows the nature of the battle and he knows the nature of the weapon. That's why Psalm 149 says we should go and praise him. When we are praising him, look at Psalm 149. Please pay attention this morning, amen, because you are about to break through. I say you are about to break through. So make sure you pay attention. Psalm 149 says, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the make with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the hidden 
and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want to quickly let you know when it says to execute vengeance upon the hidden, the people is talking about the witches, the wizards, the uh, wicked human beings who are walking around as human beings, but they are not. Hallelujah. So it's not um, a generic term. It's a term that refers to specific human beings who God wants to deal with. And he has to use his people. Amen. Now, the first thing you need to know about warfare is that you have to be joyful. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is a weapon. Come on, ever say the joy of the Lord is my strength and it's a weapon. That's how you see me. I dance a lot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I dance, I sing, I laugh. Look, when you laugh, it's a weapon. Because it's a declaration of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see you laugh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are not laughing. <laughs> ha. You don't know how to laugh. <laughs> when you, for example, eh? <laughs> if that small child comes to me and say, I'm going to beat you up today, when I, <laughs> I will just look at the child and laugh. Hallelujah. Look at this person that I can just speak with one hand and fling. Want to beat me? Let me see you laugh at the devil like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> now you understand. How can Satan come against you with the king of kings inside you? The Lord of Lords inside you. The fire of the Holy Ghost inside you. The blood of Jesus inside you. Come on, let me see you laugh at him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh-huh, now you understand. So when you see problems, laugh. Hallelujah. Because you, when you laugh, you declare the victory. You tell the devil you are wasting your time. I know that for most of us, uh, the first instinct is fear. That's okay. You're allowed to fear, but after the fear, throw the fear away and start to laugh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm not going to be afraid of this. Hallelujah. And you begin to praise God. And you begin to thank him. The Bible says when you praise God, he takes pleasure in your praises. And then he supplies the weapon. He gives you a two-edged sword with which to punish the hidden. Hallelujah. With which to disgrace them. He says, this honor has all the saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see you laugh as you clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if the devil cannot take your joy, he can never take your miracle. If he cannot take your joy, if he cannot intimidate you with fear and worries, he cannot take your healing, he cannot take your children, he cannot take your money, he cannot take your miracle. Somebody shout hallelujah and laugh hallelujah. It's very dangerous not to, not to, be, not to be rejoicing at all times. If it, it's a weapon. Satan also has his own weapon. Tears. Fear, murmuring, doubt, anger, all those negative emotions, they are from him. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen the fruit of the Spirit is tears, fear, anger? <laughs> Hallelujah. The fruit, the evidence that you carry the Holy Ghost is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It is not anger or frustration or fear or crying. No. That is the evidence of the presence of the enemy. Hallelujah. I always say, Satan, come out for road. Do just get out of the way. I carry Holy Ghost. I no get it, break it. I go jam you, you go die. <laughs> if you come my way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
He is always tempting us to want to cry, give up, murmur, complain, fear. No, reject that in the name of Jesus. Receive the joy of the Lord. So that's the primary weapon, the joy. And the joy shows that you have, you have faith. It shows you have confidence that this problem is over. And sometimes when you, are, you, 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 you just um, succumb to tears, to worries, to anxieties, when the angels are coming with your miracle, and they peep inside and they see tears, they see anxiety, they don't see faith, they go back. Hallelujah. That's why you must be smarter than Satan. Even if you are looking at the problem, koro koro with your eyes, begin to smile and begin to praise God. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the problem is not bigger than God. Amen. Okay. So, the blood of Jesus Christ is the weapon we have been given for this time. Amen. We can use fire, we can use water, we can use any other thing, but that blood, you must use it. You must start with it and end with it. Let me say something again about the blood of Jesus. Without the blood, the fire cannot work. <laughs> the blood is for the cleansing. Actually, inside the blood, you have all the weapons. Amen? 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 Without the blood, what does that mean? It means if you are not saved, if you are not sanctified by the blood of Jesus, if, you, if there is sin, if there is no cleansing, the fire, the Holy Ghost will not come. Hallelujah. So the blood first. Hallelujah. Amen. And because this warfare we are talking about is concerning COVID-19 and the whole earth, we need the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can come up here and, and, and release fire. Of course, we have the fire. But it is not your problem. COVID is about sin. Hallelujah. It's about people who have sinned against God. And so if we want to intervene or intercede, we need the blood for forgiveness and for cleansing. And then we can lose the fire. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So the blood of Jesus Christ is one potent weapon against spiritual wickedness in high places. And to demolish every stronghold of satanic forces. It cannot achieve less for you. That blood will always work. Because it is the blood of the perfect sacrifice. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Amen. I want you to, let's go to Revelation 12. I want you to see something there. Verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice say in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the dead. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's just stop there. Now, that's one thing you need to know about warfare. It started in heaven. Hallelujah. 
Satan, we know that he was not called Satan. God did not create him as Satan. God created him as Lucifer the handsome, the one that was in charge of the choir in heaven, the second in command, hallelujah. And one day, he organized a coup in heaven. He decided, no, I don't want to be second in command anymore. I want to be in charge. Hallelujah. Are you listening? He organized a rebellion against God Almighty. And he gathered one third of the angels. Listen to me. I want you to know the origin of the war you are fighting so you can depend on God when it is time to fight. Hallelujah. He took one third of the angels and said, we're going to take over. Hallelujah. When I become God, you become deputy. So he deceived them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And then the, his angels, and the, the Bible says, uh, there, wo- there was one in heaven, Michael and his angels, angel Michael, the one in charge of warfare. And his angels, they fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. How many of you know that this happened? How many of you know that this is not a story? It's not newspaper story. It happened. Satan organized a coup. And God said, God, God even said, you want to fight me? You are too small. Michael. Said, Michael. Go get him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Clap for God the Father. Hallelujah. You don't know who you have. God the Father is inside you. You are afraid of who? The devil. Ah, He already lost the battle. God the Father says, so you want to fight me? Because I made you deputy. You want to take over. Michael, go get him. So Michael collected the rest of the angels that were still on the side of God. Amen. And they fought. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they fought in heaven. He fought Michael and his angels. And Michael fought him and those angels he has deceived. May Satan never deceive you in the name of Jesus. If he can deceive angels, be careful. Hallelujah. And now, and then he fought, but he did not prevail. He lost the battle. And he lost his position. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to see how badly hurt he was, go and read Isaiah 14 when you get home. He lost the battle. He lost his position. And he was like, okay, God, I'm sorry. God said, no. Go down. Hallelujah. God just did like this. Everybody do like this. That's the end of the devil. He was cast out. Hallelujah. From his position. Amen. Now, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. All of you who see, the, you see snakes in your dream. He's already cast out. Hallelujah. Called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world. He will not deceive you in Jesus name. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So they are here. I say they are on earth. Fallen angels. They were angels before. So you are not dealing with ordinary things. They were powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. But they were cast out from heaven. Hallelujah. Now. And I heard a loud voice say in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Immediately he was cast down. The other angels began to dance in heaven. Hallelujah. They say, How? Wow, we are now safe. Hallelujah. There is now salvation here. We are strong now. The kingdom of our God and the, by the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren has been cast out. Before the war, he was causing problems for those angels. He would go and tell God, do you see Michael today? Michael did not go to where you sent him. 
it will, it will, it will accuse all the angels. So he was already giving trouble. Now let me talk to you. Those of you who like to accuse others, that's the spirit of the devil. Hallelujah. Accuse your husband, accuse the bishop, accuse the brethren, accuse, accuser of the brethren. We rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Don't be part of that. Don't be a gossip. Amen. Satan was always accusing the brethren, and so they, they, they were rejoicing. And that is still his title. I want to tell you that he still knows how to go accuse you to God. That's why you have to be very, very careful. That's why I said the first weapon is obedience. Hallelujah. If, and he knows everything. You know he was in heaven. If you are a liar, he knows. If you are fornicating, he knows. You can come and put up a straight face in church and be praying. He knows. Hallelujah. If, whatever you are doing wrong, he knows. So don't give him the opportunity to go and accuse you before God and stop your prayers. Hallelujah. And so he still has that title. Now, he has been cast out and then heaven was rejoicing and uh, they were rejoicing day and night. Now, look at how they overcame him. Verse 11. Let's read it. And they overcame him by what? By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So that battle was fought with the blood. Are you hearing me? The battle that was fought in heaven, that cast him down, was fought with the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Last night as I was praying, I said, Father, I need those angels in Revelation 12 that fought him in heaven. We need them, we need them here on earth now. I said, we need them here on earth now with the blood of the Lamb and with the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. What, what was the word of their testimony? They were saying salvation and strength belong to our God. Don't let the devil change what you say. Hallelujah. Don't let him put anger and frustration and fear and say, you don't say things that are not written in the word. Amen. So they have the blood and they have the word. They say salvation belongs to God. Strength belongs to God. What does that mean? Saying, Satan, you are not the strongest here. Our strength is in God. Our salvation is in God. So what they were saying in that battle and the blood of Jesus and also not loving their lives unto death, it means they didn't give up. Hallelujah. They, you know, if you want to do warfare, you cannot be lazy. Hallelujah. Amen. You know why I didn't put us on Zoom last night? I just wanted us to rest. But I think... You know, I, I believe the pastors, you are smart enough to continue in prayer. Hallelujah. I didn't sleep till three. I just took the prayers that we prayed on the 24th and repeated them. And continued in that prayer. You cannot love your life unto death. Once you start, there is no looking back. Hello? How many military people are here? When you start shooting the enemy. Amen? Amen. Do you look back? You don't say, oh, I shot yesterday. Let me rest today. Huh? Is that how it is done in the battlefield? Kalunga, we see you today. Is that how it's done in the battlefield? You fight to finish. The battle must be over. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genge tokonjo. That's why I say vambos, vambos, they, 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 I don't know, they come from heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Their songs are meaningful. They are scriptural. When you start to fight, there's no looking back. Is that not what the song is saying? Inotala konima, inotala. 
Genge, genge, tokonjo, inota. Inota la konima. No looking back. Let me tell you, when you look at the weapons that God has given us in Ephesians 6, hallelujah. I like the way Sister Christina is looking at me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you look at Ephesians 6, we have all kinds of weapons. But there is no, there is no armor for the back. We have a lot of armor. The one for the head, the one for the chest, the one for the feet, the one for the waist. But there is no weapon, no armor for your back. So if you turn your back, you'll be wounded. You must face the battle. Genge tokonjo inotala eh inotala konima. You understand that? It means once you start to say salvation belongs to God, strength belongs to God. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am fruitful in the name of Jesus. I am healed by the blood of Jesus. You cannot say another thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because to say another thing is to look back. And the moment you look back, you begin to lose the ground you have taken already. You will not look back in Jesus' name. And you will not relax. Hallelujah. When I started praying last night because... No, I had people over and I was on my feet the whole day. You know, this birthday never finishes. <laughs> and then I started praying. I was dozing. I said, ah, what kind of dozing is this one? I stood up on my feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, def definitely the flesh will want you to sleep. Then you stand up. Hallelujah. Don't say, oh, I'm tired. Let me rest tonight. That is when the enemy will try to come in. Because he knows you are tired. Hallelujah. Receive the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That blood can never lose his power. No, the point is, that is what they used in heaven to overcome Satan. Hallelujah. And his cohorts. Amen. And now the angels, they were rejoicing. They are very happy. And they say, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 12, and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. As you pray, some of the things that God reveals, they are frightening. We cannot even tell you. Because the, the, the enemy knows that his time is short. If it is not for the mercy of God, he wants to use this coronavirus to wipe off the earth. To kill as many people as possible. But we thank God for his mercies. Hallelujah. That's why the prophetic entrance came in December. And the Lord said, pray. Amen. So that we can either, when you see, when you have a prophetic unction, when God speaks ahead of time, and you begin to pray, the purpose of that prophecy that came before the things actually happened is for you to be aware so that your prayer will either cancel the event or mitigate. Hallelujah. Make the, if the event less powerful. If the word of God was not going out to the servants of God in December, what Satan wanted to do, you, I, I don't even think this earth has ever seen it before with that coronavirus, and he's still fighting. But the battle is not his own. The battle is the Lord's. And the Lord has given us the weapon. The weapon is the blood of the Lamb. Wherever you go, make sure you lose that blood of Jesus on yourself, inside out, on everything you eat, on everything you wear. Be practical with the blood. Hallelujah on the food you buy from the store, the food in your fridge, on, on, on your bed, just throw the blood everywhere. 
on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And from there, you throw the blood on the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. That's the reason the Lord said we should take communion every Sunday to remember that he already shed his blood. To remind us to use the weapon. Hallelujah. Amen. So he has the, the devil is frustrated. He wants to take over before Jesus comes. But that is contrary to the word of God. You know, but let me tell you something. The amazing thing is that if Christians don't pray, he might do a lot of damage. If we don't wake up and carry the weapon that we have, hallelujah, and throw it back at him. If he can organize a coup in heaven, he can organize one on earth. What you are saying now is a coup, hallelujah. He knows that his time is short. He knows that the Lord will soon come. He says, let me take over. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, by not loving our lives unto death. And the word that God has given us is our anchor. To God be the glory, the greatness, the power, the majesty, hallelujah. Everything in heaven and on earth belongs to him. And he is exalted above them all. Come on, clap for the king of glory. Amen. So, we have to take the blood and apply it. Let me also say something to you. When the children of Israel were to leave Egypt, they were told what to do with the lamb. Is that not so? They were to kill the lamb. You know that story. Amen. And they were to apply the blood. Amen. On their lintel because whenever the angel of death was passing, wherever he sees the blood, he will pass over. Amen. Now, suppose the children of Israel did not obey that instruction. Come on now. Suppose they just cut the lamp, ate the lamp, forgot to apply the blood. What would have happened? Huh? Because the angel of death was everywhere. It is only the blood. Let them see the blood on your doorpost. Let, let, let coronavirus see the blood of Jesus on you. Let them see the blood of Jesus on your children. On your children's children, hallelujah. Amen. You can wear the mask if you like, but what will set you free from what is going on now is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. I'm not saying don't do what you have to do. Amen. Do what you have to do as a human being, but put your trust in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Apply the blood. If we are going to experience the power in the blood of Jesus, we have to personally apply it to our lives and to all our situations. To everything. Everyone say everything. 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 Your car, your house, your food, your children, your head. Your, you know, I always imagine the blood flowing from the top of my head to the tip of my toes, inside out. Every organ, whether it's your liver, your intestine, your heart, your lungs, let them receive the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. See the blood flow inside you. Personally see that blood. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And the Bible says also in Hebrews 12, 24, this is for the sake of intercession, that the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things than the blood of Abel. How many of us know that the blood of Jesus has a mouth? It is talking. It is pleading. Hallelujah. It is speaking. It is interceding for us. Hallelujah. It is begging God for the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, if COVID-19 is about sin, it is about the reproach of sin, then let the blood of Jesus intercede for the earth. Hallelujah. And who is going to apply? It's you and I. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus can also speak destruction to the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. It brings life to us. It speaks destruction to the enemy. Leviticus 17, 11 says that uh, the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Look at John 6. I want you to know what you have as you leave the church today. Just put your trust in the blood. John chapter 6 from verse 48. Jesus says, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. Do I hear amen? amen? Hallelujah. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Amen. So, Jesus has given everything that we need. Look at verse 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to thoroughly put your trust in that blood. Thoroughly understand what you are doing when you come to the communion table. That I'm eating the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, you know, when you, when you eat the flesh and you drink his blood and challenges are coming your way, you must remind the devil, I have the life of Jesus in me. I have his flesh in me. I have his blood cleansing me. You have to always see that blood in your bloodstream. Especially if you are HIV positive. You can kick that thing out of you in a second. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me repeat what I just said. If you have HIV AIDS, you can kick that disease out. Flush it out of your system by the word of your testimony in a second. Hallelujah. You can, when you are drinking water, say, I'm drinking the blood of Jesus. It's flushing HIV AIDS out of me. When you are eating, be conscious of the sickness, be conscious of the remedy, which is the blood of the lamb. When you're eating your food, you see it full of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are taking a shower. You <laughs> Hallelujah. See the blood. See the blood. See the blood. See the blood. One man of God gave a testimony. He said one person came with HIV AIDS and the person was given the anointing oil and she was told, take it three times a day. Hallelujah. Amen. And she would just take the anointing oil, it's a, a, a teaspoonful, every uh, three times a day, every day. And she was healed. Hallelujah. It's not the oil that did it. What did it was the blood. But the man of God used the oil as point of contact for the faith of that person. But if you don't even take the oil, your faith is alive. You can throw that blood in everything you drink or eat and you will be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I've used Zambok. How many of you know Zambok? Zambok. Eh? I've used it to anoint somebody before <laughs> in the hospital. Hallelujah. I got there. The person was to go for heart surgery, heart transplant. In South Africa, and they were dilly today, tomorrow. So I was called. I went there. When I got there, I didn't have anointing oil. I said, What do you have here? He said, I only have Zambok. I said, Bring it. Hallelujah. Anointed the chest with Zambok, and he was healed because the faith is not in the Zambok. I just use the Zambok as, as something to help his faith. Hallelujah. The faith is not in the oil. It's not in anything but in the blood of Jesus Christ. But every time you are applying what you are applying, call on that blood. Hallelujah. Amen. So, for our purpose today, we are going to pray using the blood of Jesus as a weapon. Amen. Because in that blood is the life of the Lord. And that's why he says, 
unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, eat my flesh, drink my blood, you have no life in you. Amen? I want you to lift up your hands and say, Oh Lord, I believe your word. Every day of my life, I will eat your flesh and drink your blood and I will walk around with your life inside me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can use your mahangu as holy communion. Hallelujah. And you just want to eat. This is the blood of Jesus. One day you will know that diseases disappear from you. Amen. You have divine life. You have the power for overcoming all that comes your way. Praise the Lord. The blood of Jesus is also our shield. Hallelujah. It's our protection. Amen. Amen. It's our provision. There is nothing you need that is not in that blood. Amen. So, we want to rise up on our feet to pray. And after that, we come to the communion table. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want the choir to come up. Amen. There is power. There is power. There is power in his name. There is power. There is power, there is power, there is power in his blood. Resurrection power, healing power, there is power in his blood. Deliverance power, healing power, there is power in his blood. 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 Healing power, deliverance power. There is power in his blood. Healing power, deliverance power. There is power in his blood. Resurrection power, healing power, there is power in his blood. 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 Hallelujah. Those angels were rejoicing and they gave us the clue. They said, This is how to overcome him. Hallelujah. It's what they used in heaven and it's what we must use here the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. What we are saying now that there is power in his blood, there is healing in his blood, there is deliverance in his blood, there is mercy in his blood. Shout, Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Oh yes, the blood of Jesus, oh yes, the blood of Jesus shall never lose it. Oh yes, the blood of Jesus shall never lose it. Never, never lose his power. Shall never lose it. Shall never, never lose his power. Shall never lose it. Oh yes, the blood of Jesus. Shall never lose it. Shall never lose his power. Oh yes, the blood of Jesus shall never lose Shall never lose his power. Shall never, never lose his power. Shall never lose it. Oh yes, the blood of Jesus shall never lose it. 
Look, <laughs> if angels have to bring out the blood of Jesus in heaven against Satan, hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah, you and I better know that <laughs> we need to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. They didn't fight him in their own strength. Hallelujah. How many of you know that angels are powerful? Huh? Especially Michael. Michael. We're talking of Michael. The archangel. The one that can just throw Satan down with one hand. He brought out the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He brought out the blood. Makurike zeke dede kasanto. Meseke dede kaskade baba. Makosopo kosheka dede kaseka de baba kode kasanto. Mekosen tokosen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Especially concerning salvation, concerning strength, concerning deliverance, Michael looked at him and said, I'm not going to waste my time with you. I have the blood. You ha cannot argue against the blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Do you know why Michael brought out the blood? I thank you, God, for this revelation. Because they were all angels. Hallelujah. They were all angels. And sometimes the covenant can be working. And so since he's a covenant breaker, he brought the blood against him. And said, you are a covenant breaker. They were all equal in strength. Why do you think he will, uh, Satan will organize a coup in heaven if he did not think he could win? But he didn't know the secret of the blood. He is not omniscient. He is limited. Hallelujah. You have nothing to fear. Bring out the blood. The blood is his defeat. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The blood. <laughs> Even before God the Father, when God the Father was ready with that book to open it and just destroy the whole earth. And John was crying and said, who is going to take the book from God the Father? Who is going to help us? He was crying. He had a vision. And one of the elders touched him and said, do not cry. He says, look. Look at the lamb that was slain. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. God the Father has given us the weapon of the blood. Even against his own anger. Even when God is angry, the remedy is the blood. When he brought out the book and John said, now we are in trouble. That is the book of judgment. Who is going to take it from him? Nobody could approach him. But the lamb that was slain from the foundation of times, he went. <laughs> Hallelujah to God with the glory. Thank you, Jesus. And when he appeared before the throne, that throne that was full of thunder, lightning, fire, nobody could approach. He went, when, 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 when Jesus was being shown to John, he was shown as the lion of the tribe of Judah. But when he approached the throne, he approached as the lamb. Hallelujah. He said, Father, here is my blood. He said, I already died for them. I already shed my blood. He said, you cannot destroy them. And he took the book. He took the book. And he took the book. He took the book. 
Hallelujah. And when he took the book, he began to open the seal. He didn't open the judgment all at once. When he opened it, he will release a little judgment, a little mercy, and then he will release his blood, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. That's why for COVID-19, the blood is the answer. Whether it's coming from Satan, the blood of Jesus is the answer. Whether it's coming from God Almighty as judgment, the blood is the answer. Wherever COVID is coming from, the blood of Jesus is the answer. Hallelujah. Why do you think we worship him? Why do you think we go crazy in his presence? We know the power that is in his blood. We know what he has done for us. Oh, hallelujah. Lift up your hands and bless him. Bless him, bless him. Give him all the glory for what he has done. Where that COVID is coming from Satan, the blood of Jesus against Satan, whether it is coming as judgment from God, the blood, the blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Father. Oh, come on. I want you to wave your hands and say, thank you, Father. Bless God the Father. Bless him. Because he already knew that he is going to make a provision for us to escape. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of our testimony. By not loving our lives unto death. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, the blood is the answer. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why he says, When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. That's God the Father saying, when I see the blood, that is it. Hallelujah. So COVID should not be a problem if we understand that the blood is the answer. May God open our understanding. Let's lift up our hands and say, Abba Father. Abba Father. 